How to add a new table to Business Central using only the simple object designer. Hey, I'm Eric, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add a brand new table to Business Central without writing a single line of code using just the simple object designer. Let me show you how. Here is the simple object designer, and uh, as you can see, and all the zeros that I have not made anything else with the object designer here now, so we're starting from scratch. But you don't actually just add a table uh, because adding a table is not enough. You need to add the table to the database. You need to create some UI to access the table and potentially also some business logic to interact with the table. Um, and all that we bundle together in what we call a feature. Um, and when you create a feature, you select a template because we need a template to know all the components that goes together. And the template we're going to use in this video is the data table template. Um, and a table needs a name in the database and we can call that pet. You can give it a, a more descriptive uh, caption. Uh, that's how a user will see it, but I will also just call this pet. Then you need to select what kind of UI we want. We want a list, a card. We also want an API endpoint and say, sure, give me everything here. That's it for the wizard. We'll click next. And now we're on the feature card. And uh, we just need to add some fields now. Um, and I'm going to create a database of pets. So let's do just like, you know, uh, custom number, vendor number. We'll have a pet number. And we use a code field for that. We have lots of different field types that you can use. Code is typically what you use for something like a customer number or a pet number in this case. Object designer suggests 20 characters. That's a good length. So we'll just stick with that. I'll make the caption nicer, pet number. And I want this field on the list. I want it on a card. I also want it on the API. We'll add another field, a name, use a text for this one, show it on the list, on the card, on the API. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm, everything has a number. Fields, has, fields have numbers in Business Central. And you might as well order them logical by field number. That makes everything simpler. Um, but you don't have to you know, say that the next one is three. We can say 10. Then let's add like the weight. That should be a decimal. We do not want that on the list. We want a card and on the API. Let's add another pet dimension. How about height? Um, the same thing just on the card and on the API. And let's add something about health. So how about what it, food, feed. Let's do food. How, what does it eat? Let's do a text, but 50, maybe this is 500. Maybe it needs to be descriptive. So we'll say 500. We'll not want that on the list. We want a card not in the API, but since it's a 500, it's a long field. Maybe let's go into field settings and say that this should be a multi-line field. So there's a bigger, big, bigger text box for this to work with. Uh, then we can add another field. Let's how about if PD feedings per day? I just came up with that. Feedings per day. We'll put that on the card and in, in the API. And maybe a, you know, the last vet date, visit. Let's do visit and say that that's a date. And maybe we do want that on the list, on the card and on the API. Um, and, and who is the vet? So we could do just a text field. Um, that would be okay. But what if the vets happen to be vendors? Then let's use a special field called a lookup field. And as hey, you gotta go into the field settings to, to work with the lookup field. So we'll go into field settings. And down here in the lookup section, we can say, okay, let's use vendor table number 23. Now the field actually changed the size. We had 50 there for just for a second. Now it says 20 because what the object design will do is saying, okay, in order for this to be a valid lookup to vendor, we'll go look at what is the primary key of the vendor table. That's a code 20. So behind the scene, this field also becomes a code 20. Uh, and I want this on the card and maybe I want it in the API also. So, but maybe we want to see the name of the, the, the vendor. And now I'm renaming something that's 
very typical of me suddenly ending up in rename creating empty field. So let's try that again, 24. So we'll do vet name text and we'll show that on the card. But let's go back to the vet field and say, okay, so when we are selecting a vet, when we are selecting a vendor, let's actually transfer some values from the vendor card. So let's transfer the name field from the vendor card to the vet name field that we just created here. So from name to vet name. So whenever we select a vendor, we also get the name transferred to the to the to the pet card here. Okay, so that's that's a lot of fields. It's pretty good. Um, so I kind of organized the field logically by number here, but we they all just sit in the general section. As you know from from the custom card, you know like general section and invoicing and payments and so on. So we can define groups. So let's define some group and say general is the first one. The second one is dimensions, just to mess with all the accountants. And the third one is health. Capital H. Yeah, I want to rename. There we go. So now I will go back to my fields and I'll say, okay, pet number is general, name is general, weight is in the dimension, height is in dimension, feed, did I still, I call it food, didn't I? Food is in health and feedings per day is in health and vet, last vet visit and the vet number and name all in health. So that is pretty good. Um, let's verify that this table is good. So we verify it and we do get a message. A data table field must have exactly one field that's marked as the primary key. The current count is zero. Oh well. I forgot to say that the pet number is the primary key. Every table in Business Central must have a primary key that defines uniqueness. So there can only be one pet with number one or ABC or whatever we put into this field. Um, but maybe we want just like, you know, customers, we get a, a customer number. Uh, maybe we want that also, and we can actually turn that on because the template knows how to do that. So we can say, hey, use the number series for primary key value. I'll do that. Number series would require a new table for storing the setup created. So somewhere we now have, if we're using number series, we have to tell the system what number series we use. And for that, we need a setup table. But the system, the, system, the simple object designer will take care of that. We just say yes. And now that we close this one, we have actually two features, not one. We have the one we have designed. Then we got a bonus one called setup that now has a pet number series field. Uh, and if we go and look at the field settings on that one, we can see that that is actually hooked up to the number series table. And behind the scene, this field is linked to, uh, to our pet feature. So we are actually doing pretty good here. But let's add one more thing. So let's go to another feature of the symbol object designer, create new fields on existing tables. And I will go into and add a field to the customer table, table 18. And we get a high field number here because we are not, this is not our field, our table. So we get not low numbers, but high numbers. Let's add a field called pet. I'll do a lookup again. So exact same thing as we just did. And this time I want to look up to my newly created table, the pet table. So I selected that. And the last thing I want to do is let me put the pet table on the customer card. So here's the customer card. We will add this as the at last in the general section. Okie dokie. So we have created two features. We have added one field and we have placed one field on a page. So let's publish this. I hit publish and I say yes to publish to this environment. And now the simple object designer is programming. That's what's happening right now. And um, when it's done programming, it builds an app file with everything in it. And then it does two things. First, 
it downloads the app file. So if you're doing this in a sandbox, you can take the app file that has been downloaded and transfer that, go to your production environment and upload it as you would do with any other app that you get for your production environment. Um, at the same time, it's also deploying here to my uh, the sandbox I'm working in, the environment I'm in right now. And ignore everything that's happened here on this one because this is my testing database. So there's a bunch of crazy stuff here. It's focus on the top line. That's what we have been doing right now. It says in progress, I can hit a five. And now it's completed it means that what we have done has now been deployed to this environment. So I'll close this object designer. I'll just do a control of five here and actually reload business central. So we uh, don't get the, uh, the message that the admin has changed something, something, something. And um, if I now search for pet, I have a pet list and actually uh, it's clever enough that we got that bookmark from, that was probably from an early attempt. Normally you will have to bookmark it, but um, anyway. Uh, so I can create a pet, but before I can, I'll do that, I will actually um, go in here and then say, what did we call this? Single, no, we didn't. Something with data table. I forgot what we can have named the app. Data table setup. So remember we got the setup thing where we had the number series for the, for the, for the pet table. And let's use a simply blanket order number series for our pets. That's probably a good one. So now we have the setup defined. We can go back to our pet list. I'll hit new for pet. You see we get the pet card with the exact fields that we placed here. I'll just hit enter in the pet number. And I got a, a number from the blanket. Now, now that's our pets. So I have a dog called Spira. Um, and she is, what is she? She is 47 pounds and uh, 40 centimeters, just to mess with all the uh, measurement systems. And in the food section, I can, I can type because we have a lot of place here and she gets fed two times a day. And the last visit to the pet were on the fifth. And now I can see who is the pet. I have a look up to vendor, so, so the pet is clearly Fabricant. And we got the name transferred here. Um, so the pet card works quite well. Um, but let's go to a customer, because we also added a pet field on a customer. So I can go to my uh, customer. And now we have a pet field here on the customer. I can do a logout and select that that was the pet. And we have 13 minutes into the video and with including all my talk, we developed a new table with UI, with API, with a setup thing, and we in implemented it on the, on the customer table. That's the power of the, um, of the simple object designer. Go try it out. It's an app source and you can read more about it on hogart.com. Link is below the video. Thanks for watching.